All right, so we're back. They're doing the die rolls. O'Brien, of course, rolls a 20 out of 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brian wins that. Battle number like... one, win the die roll. <laughs> Battle number two, get a him with men on it and a force of well. <laughs> or force of Torak. Right, force of Torak. Um, Matt is playing Dredge. He's going to powder this hand. Man, basically it's a hand. It's one of the best powders you can get game one. It's just like... Nothing. Garbage. He does have the Ley Lines against Salvager's Oath, which is interesting. Oh, and here we have a Sun Titan. Yeah. Yeah, he's in Mulligan again. So I was helping Matt out with his deck a little bit. Um, oh, this is a solid hand. As a is yeah. a big dredger, it has a wisp mare for for oath, yeah, and then it has lit land of the void. Yeah, he has a dredger. He has bazaar. He has wisp mare. He has mana sources. I don't see how he loses this game. This is a really solid hand. Like there's... actually, um, Brand has the main deck spell bomb in his hand, so okay. he gets one crack at the graveyard. He gets one crack at the graveyard, but there's nothing there's nothing exiled by powders. So when that usually starts becoming relevant. So there's stuff already gone for game one. Now Matt could really just walk into this, but it's not it's not but not really because it's he needs to play the spell bomb. Yeah. And you see it coming. So yeah, it's it's this is why spell bomb and Tormod's crap because of the lack of the surprise factor become a lot less impactful in like a game one like this than a rap trap would be. If you were to keep it main deck, but yeah. then again, they're a lot worse against every other deck. So, yeah, Rap, Rap Trap is a one hundred percent for Dredge card. I would say. I guess maybe for against petition. maybe against petition, but like they have to play a couple cantrips first. I guess you can do it like Crack of Fetchland Ritual, yeah. Ritual Resolve. Like I guess they like go Ritual, Ritual, Petition, Yog Will, and you can put, you can crack and their you can Rap Trap them. But that, that's like they're just playing it. They're not even like seeing your hand or dressing you. Like you have to have it. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. So I, I, I probably wouldn't set it against Petition. It depends how bad your deck is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> it depends how many dead cards you have. So he's playing um, this. So yeah, he discards. He's he just a spell bomb. And he, he says, he's playing around a little bit. Yeah, he's keeping his flashback cards, but discarding a dredge. So I guess he just can see how... F Ooh, just Confluence. Well, not Confluence, um, Orchard. Yeah, so I mean, he just seems to assemble... He has Time Walk, though. Um, Brian is putting together basically exactly what you would need to break your way out of the amazing hand that Matt had. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to get a dredge. Let's see how this dredge is. Yeah, so he's just doing a regular dredge. He's not going to use the bazaar, so he can save those cards in his hand. Yeah. Try to force force this. Does the Narc amoeba? Like, so he gets a Narc amoeba and a Cabal therapy, so and a, and a bridge. So Brian has to decide whether or not he wants to let himself get Cabal therapy, basically. Um. Well, first of all, therapy always names force of will. So if he wants to, a spell bomb activation here would save his force of will in his hand. Right. And it also gets rid of a bridge from below. Right. Brian has a passionate hatred for capital therapy. It's really he funny. Does. He hates what it, I mean <laughs> He hates capital therapy, he hates wasteland, he hates all cards that interact with him, basically. <laughs> he He's hates like, that card interacts with me and it's not a counter spell. I don't like it. Well he hates force of will. <laughs> He only plays Force of Will because no, he, he has to. Play, he hates playing Force of Will. He loves when his opponents play Force of Will against him. That's true. He hates when people play Cabal Therapy against him. <laughs> um, so we so, got a cast okay. from hand as Cabal Therapy. Matt yeah, all right. So I'm not sure if I like that. I, I like flashing back the one that's in his yard first and then casting the other one. Yeah. Because not, not, now you're exposing two therapies instead of exposing zero to this Neo. So now that th this therapy is going to hit the bin. Well, um, he doesn't get you, priority. You can, flash it back, you can flash it back without without passing priority, but he can now crack the Neo and take out a therapy and a bridge. 
bridge. And bridge said, trigger on the stack. Right. With a bridge trigger on the stack, you can take out the other therapy. But I mean, seeing as seeing as Brian let this go before, yeah. I mean, this is a similar situation, I guess. But his hand is just getting demolished now. Well, the will, it's going to be time walk because none of the other cards are relevant. Repeal? Nope, Muscle is dead. Repeal is basically kills a, dead. Kills a zombie, I guess. <laughs> kills one zombie in cycles. What did he name? Oh, he's doing it. Okay, so he's playing it differently. So um, he, he went a little too fast. So you let yeah. him do the resolve the bridge. I guess he, is he letting him rename right, he or the reveal on the zombie? Yeah. All right, resolve the bridge and then therapy. Okay. Resolve. Okay. okay. Time walk. Yeah, it's gonna be a time walk, and then he doesn't have much. It's like the little. That's one of the worst cards you can possibly see as a dredge player is time walk. Yeah. Never want your opponent more turns. <laughs> Alright, so he still hasn't done it. I guess um The rest of Brian's hand is garbage. Yeah. His two cards are dead. Um but he's his, still... he has a land and, and, and two dead cards. He still has any hill in spot in play though. So Matt, I pass if I'm Matt, I pass. And is then he... I dredge into the turn. He's dredging now. I don't want to give him the chance to draw this card and get a gas spell. So he's gonna get one more Brian can potentially get one more spell, one more gas spell off this. Like one more chance to see a good card, rather, is what I mean. Ooh. So there's a troll. So I'm thinking he nabs troll. He sees orchard, so he wants to keep that Wismare. I'm not even sure if I like this bizarre activation. Yeah, I like doing end of turn. You get more information based on what Brian's doing. You get, um... You also don't let Brian cycle the Nihil if you get a really good dredge here. Well, you can't cycle. It gets exiled. Oh right, all right. Yeah, so, yeah sorry. Yeah, the draw. So it's it's a it's a glorified. Right. Um, so it, you would just it would just so it's more you're you're trading more information for. Yeah. Matt Matt is trading, maybe slightly more speed for more yeah. for less information. So He's this is. Sure. It's gonna get whismared. Yeah, it's gonna get whismared. The Brian doesn't know that, but maybe he does. He's pausing for a second. I mean, what is he? You gotta go for it, right? That's all you got left. Um, you don't want it to walk into another therapy. I mean, if I'm if I'm Matt, that's one of the, that's one of the few things that I play blind name. Forcible is dead because you know he only drew one card and he had no blue in his hand. Um, Fluster Storm, maybe. Pretty much every other card in the deck is dead. Fluster Storm is. I mean, I guess Flusterstorm is maybe a singleton. Like, you don't name single, And you don't even know if he's even playing Flusterstorm. You don't know the deck list. You know he's playing four of the Druids. And you know Oath of Druids is a bad draw for you. But I guess you might think that he just plays it against you. But that, like, I guess that's the good justification for not naming Oath. I mean, what is, is he... If he, drew, if he drew Oath, he would have just played Oath against you. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, back up, back up. He knows he has Wismare. He gets Axiom Probed. Oh, okay. He does yeah. that. Okay. He knows there's so, Wismare. Right, right. So then, then, then naming Oath is much better. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, yeah, everyone, it's, it's everyone in the chat, back up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He he played the turn one. Um, he played the turn one probe, so he knows he knows Wismare is there. All right. So here's a Narc Amoeba and what's going to eventually be a Blood Gas trigger. So he, now he's inside. There is a bridge, two Narc Amoebas and a Blood Gas, and two therapies. That's a lot. He's going but, kind of slow here. Have... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, the second you pop this knee hill, uh, Matt knows the coast is clear and he's just going to go for it. Um, so, like, this knee hill is kind of just slowing okay. the game down. And But that's too much. Yeah. He says yeah. that's too much. I can't deal with two therapies and two creatures and all that other stuff. So this was a draw step. Uh, that was a draw so... step. So, so now he's in the clear. So he's going to pass. Matt should just pass. He wants to play the land, right? No. There's not, I mean, I guess you can activate Bizarre, see if you get the second Bizarre. That would fine. be pretty big. So we've got Riftstone. 
So playing that Whisper is even he definitely doesn't want to discard the Whisper. The Whisper is keeping him in this game. No, no. Yeah. Um and, and, so he's down should not say his exile zone. He's down all of his therapies are gone. All four? Oh yeah, all four. He has one dread return left, I think. I think he's only playing two. No, he has three. He has three. Okay. He has two dread returns left. He has one dread return target. I think he just has call again. Uh yeah, Colagon. Oh no, I think he has a couple more. I think he had Gristlebrand. Oh, he has Gristlebrand. Oh yeah, never mind. Okay, all right. So he has plenty. Yeah, yeah this is the weird Icaridless dredge. Yeah, which is funny weird. because Icarid. Awesome? Yeah, Icarid is terrible. <laughs> no, okay. From a historical perspective, Icarid is the reason why dredge is a deck, and then Time Spiral came and turned it into a combo deck. <laughs> That's how it happened. Yeah. That's how it happened. The ridiculous, it's an amazing card. Now it's, it's completely obsolete. The the ridiculous writer, it's unnecessary. The ridiculous writer John Rizzo made this deck. You dredge into Icarids and you have four Icarids always attacking. And then Time Spiral came out, gave us Bridge from Below, Narco Amoeba, and Dread Return, and then it became a combo yeah. deck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So there's the one Gristlebrand on each side this game. Yeah, Icarid is a terrible card, honestly. It does nothing. Don't make it, fun does, of... it does not win a single matchup anymore. Don't make fun of Icarid. There's... He's got feelings, man. There's, there are zero <laughs> matchups in, in Vintage where Icarid is good. You know what? I, I'm willing to defer to your expertise, but I'm still going to disagree <laughs> with you because I love Icarid. <laughs> there are matchups where it's okay, and then there's matchups where it's like terrible and useless. <laughs> and then post board it's like this card is awful what is this doing and it's hex for three and it does nothing in my hand <laughs> well so does bridge for blow that does nothing in your hand <laughs> yeah i don't play bridge for blows either. <laughs> and narc amoeba does nothing in your hands <laughs> and and serum no, no, powder does nothing you in your hands that's only one in a blow. all right serum powder doesn't do oh, anything you're in casting your hand. a Icarid? that's three in a black for like three <laughs> one in the face that dies in the desert that's horrible that's like, that's worse than a common. You're casting a bridge from below that does actual nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, a Narcomiba is, is, a, is, a, is a bad creature to cast, yeah. It's a con, it's like a draft card. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's still a draft card. Like, these other cards are worse than draft cards if you're casting them from your hand. <laughs> So yeah, he finally pits with the Wismer, but the yeah, the he, gone. Yeah. He, he he exposed and the he um. Has, he has dread return targeting. He gets back call again. Yeah, so he, he's he's yeah. he's just conceding to that. So we can do Matt's list quick. Uh, basically, the big difference between his list and uh, Sullivan's list is he has Maydeck Dark uh, Unbla Unmask and Dark Blast Unblast. I combined both the cards. He's got three dread returns. He's got. Four three targets i guess well like the the singleton targets so he has a uh, sun titan a gristle brand and a dragon lord Colagon. so he has m more things to bring back that's why he's playing three dread returns um, yeah we also... i'm not really, I don't, I'm not a really huge fan of Colagon. i mean it, it just feels like an unnecessary component but um i mean yeah i mean that's a list so, his kill is his kill is Colligan. He, he can get Gristlebrand that, that mills him or Sun Titan that can also extend his combo. And then he gets a Dragon Lord. And you have his sideboard hate. You know, he, he has the anti hate sideboard that you, you know, the standard. Yep. Which becomes standard for, uh, for killing hate cards. And then where's Brian? There's Brian. Brian! So, interesting cards in this deck is the Magus of the Future. Um, the Tezzeret, which there's no time vault. It's just Tezzeret for value. Yeah, so I'm interested in what he takes out. Um, Into Grudge. Some of this stuff is awkward to play. Like, Magus Future might probably come out because you don't want to... You can't You can't play stuff with Cage. He's playing Cage in the sideboard. You Cage know... Cage is a Nambo. You know he's going to keep Mental Misstep in. He kept it in against Sullivan, so we know that he values the card to stop Cabal he Therapy. Nothing. He hates Cabal Therapy. He's going to play the card that stops Cabal Therapy. <laughs> it's a bad, it's a bad one for one. You know, you, you, like I said, like I said, you are correct, but he's not going to do that. He's going um, to keep it in to stop yeah. the fiendish Cabal Therapy only played by complete monsters. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just call the people playing the deck monsters. We just call it the Therapy monster. Okay, that's um, fair. The the cabal. The cabal is a monster, and they're they're. So he has so his planting needle. He has rest in two rest in pieces. Craft digger's cage. Tormod's crypt. Ravenous trap. Contained <laughs> seven 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 dread shape pieces. Six of them are different. Six unique types. This is this is what Brian does with his sideboards now uh, <laughs> for Dredge. Um, so, so any of engineered explosives, just in case some zombies, you know, leak through. Sewer supply trees is actually pretty good against Dredge because it exiles instead of puts it in the yard compared to normal removal. So you can exile like a blood gas and and they lose the recursion ability on it. It surely can't exile any Icarids. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> whatever, like, it's terrible. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, me, me and Sullivan can team up and go team Icarid. You can go team no Icarid, and we can start a rivalry against a deck that I've never played before in my life. <laughs> look, look, I love Icarid. All right, I loved him back in the days when you used to, you know, just you just swung with your Icarids and you played Moments Peace from, you know, the radio. He just sat there, and it was the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> no, 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 no. The you tech bash for you bash for like you bash for like six or nine a turn, depending <laughs> on how many acreage you got, and you would you would just fog your opponent every turn. No, no, the the deck. Like, what, do you, what do I do? The deck that won the GP though, that was um, Tolarian wins, which was hilarious because you could just dump and then dredge a yeah. whole lot. And he, the the guy who won, he played Fireman Angel in his uh, deck in his sideboard just to dredge and gain a bunch of life every upkeep. Yeah. <laughs> Better than Moments Peace because it sticks around. Okay. Like when people played no graveyard. Fireman Angel is after, though, I think, than the original figure. I'm talking about the original figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Fireman, oh, was, Fireman was, Angel was in Ravnica. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Crumb. I, I forget his. Wikipedia this. page on this, on this deck. That's how awesome it was. A whole Wikipedia page just for the original figure. You don't need the Wikipedia page. I know everything about it. It was created by this ridiculous... It was created by this ridiculous writer named John Friggin Rizzo, who used to write for Star City Games. His articles were enormous, like 30, 40 pages. But he was like, I'm actually onto something here with, with Friggerid. It was Osip Levetowitz, or Leve I don't okay. know how to say his last name. That guy, the Pro Tour champion, um, was like, hey, this deck's actually really, really good. And so he played it in like side events and stuff. And it slowly, you know, blew up from there. And then it... And then it came a combo deck, and well, that part's not not interesting. The Frigorid was interesting. That part is not interesting. The time <laughs> spiral cards, of it, which was basically that they just printed the dredge <laughs> mechanic and it, like kind of built its own deck. <laughs> it's a deck that played two lands. It wasn't a combo deck. You got to like turn eight or nine. Terrible, terrible card. I remember it being like a dollar rare, and it, that was one of the first cards, at least in my my memory, um, just shooting up in price just dramatically. It went from like a dollar dollar bin like I, this card is awful to like a ten fifteen dollar card like overnight. Dude, I got him from reading John Riz's article for a buck each off of Star City, of course you did. Yeah. and then I went back and then they then they boost you up sold, to ten you bucks. Sold them for like twenty bucks a piece or something later. No, yeah. no, I still own them. Why would I sell my precious Icarids? I only bought four. I had no idea about selling stuff. After inflation, they're like worth a dollar. <laughs> if you adjust for inflation, you have you've netted nothing. I was okay. When was that? 2013. We're gonna. How many years are we not gonna? Thirteen years. Twenty-eight, eighteen. So you, you are you are you giving sixteen-year-old me shit about? About uh, okay, there's a game going on. Well, we're, we're reminiscing about okay. Brian has a bunch of graveyard hate. Right, this is bad for. Max. It's really bad. I can't really answer either of them. I mean, if he had Serenity, he could, but he's got uh, Wismare. I mean, he has Serenity in his deck. It's just not in his hand. Right. He drew the wrong anti hate. He drew the wrong anti hate. <laughs> yeah, this is the problem. With, I mean, this is the problem with running anti hate. You got to unmask you know, off as, as, as well. Apparently. Oh, it's Unmask up. got forced. Okay, Unmask got forced, and Brian did first turn Ancestral Recall. Probed right. and yeah. saw his hand. All right, we're caught up. There's a... Uh, I see how that's top, exiled. It doesn't matter. top in play. There's a top in Brian's hand. But that's it. Brian, Brian gets to do lots of dirtling with top, and he has Neil Spellbomb to buy time. 
I guess it's bizarre. Um, Brian needs to find a hate piece that can actually stick around for a little bit, and that makes his Dino a lot better. Without having a permanent based hate, eventually Matt's just going to break through this. Um, Matt's hand is really use like pretty much just dead. He has a mana producer and he has a Wismare. I guess the Wismare answer is a oath or a rest in peace if I yeah. draw it. Which is important. It's an important thing to have in your hand. Presenting no clock, I like just sitting there. I like just sitting there and playing out lands. Because if you can get rid of the if you can get like with, a chewer, with, chewer's with, live. With Matt, with Matt preventing presenting no clock. No, with, with, with Brian Brian not having anything. He doesn't oh, no, there's no, no rush. Yeah, you the oath is a horrible, horrible matchup for these normal dredge decks. So like it's just it's just a brutal matchup. There's he like there's so many there's so many things that can go wrong. Um a lot of your kills involve leaving creatures in play. And I mean oath oath preys on you leaving creatures in play. So I mean that's the big issue. That's like the one of the big drawbacks of these of traditional oath, or traditional dredge decks is that once they go up against an oath deck that has hate pieces, or like even a storm deck that has hate pieces, it, it becomes very difficult for them to fight. Oh, decks that they're already not good against. If you add a lots of hate, it makes it very difficult. I think we might have a disconnect. From the stream. Uh, no, no, no. Um, Matt, he's back though. His oh, dot, okay. his dot went red, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> so this is like kind of what dawned the one of the things that dawned the dark depths combo, or at least what made it so much more popular, maybe than it would have been. So I pitched the second bazaar here from Matt. I play the Serenity, the Stinkweed, and I play the Paradise and the Serenity. The, all right, yeah, okay. I mean, pitching West Mirror, that's fine. Yeah. Serenity's really big here. Yeah, yeah. Serenity, because Serenity, it doesn't matter really what Brian draws next to And he let's, gets, gets, gets the sick weed now. Yeah, and I actually, might, it, I, might, I might have kept the West Mirror just to have a little more Brian factor, but. I, 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 I you lose it. A lot. Yeah, because you can, you can potentially just not have his Dredger and be stonewalled. Yeah, so it's just... See, I mean, these are the tricky things with, with Dredge, is these game two and three, is you don't... When you get down to start pitching these cards, like, you don't really want to be pitching a Bazaar, but, I mean, obviously in this situation, he's pitching one because that's, op you know, that's he had certain, yeah. getting a Serenity and plays better. Stink, you know, you, you Imp is definitely be better than Bazaar. Bazaar. gets a deck that plays Rest and Peace and Oath. <laughs> um, There's no other list yet, yeah. And... Um, I mean, you know, as he plays Oath, you don't want to be pitching Westmere against an Oath deck in general. Um, eh, but, you know, you want to keep the Dredger in his hand. So, Brian knows he's going to lose the Neil anyway, so he's going to pop the Neil, draw a card. It's an Oath, but he can't, he's not going to play it this turn because it would just walk into a rest, in, into a Serenity. Right. Um, now Matt's really going to wish he had that Westmere back. I don't know how he gets out of this. He's going to dredge right into this, this oath here. And there's a Neil. <clears throat> um, so Matt gets one free turn. This is the really good thing about Serenity. Not only does it blow up every single hate piece, but it also gives you basically like a whole free turn. Because so many dredge hate pieces are sorcery based. So like this Neil spell bomb, it does nothing for this turn. He plays containment priest in an oath deck. That's rude. <laughs> right? He's gonna, yeah, I that's true. <laughs> Actually, I didn't even realize that. He's gonna oath up a containment priest. Wait, how does that work? Not how does it work in Magic Online, where it probably just <laughs> exiles that's itself. How does it work in real Magic? It puts the containment priest in play. How does it work on Moto? I don't know. <laughs> exile the containment priest. Probably exiles uh, the containment the priest. The containment priest that a, actually... That was, glitch, that was a glitch for a really long time, so... No, no, on Moto, the containment priest actually gets deleted off of your account. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> 
Yeah, pretty crazy. He gets a Jace. Uh, it's a Jace. Okay. So I, I guess yeah, he does the, the window to oh yeah, he can't even play this stuff. So brainstorm, of course. See, I told you the mental missteps are still going to be in there. <laughs> It aggulates itself, and then the effect stays on the table. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. <laughs> that would be really, really... Like, that would be better for both... Like, Matt wouldn't be able to win this game. It would be impossible. That would actually be better for Brian. <laughs> he just plays without Oath. Yeah, Whereas yeah. Brian's plays out, Matt's playing without an entire deck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. So this is where I was, uh, anyway, uh, back to what with Dark Depths. This is where having a 2020 flying and destructible is really huge. I guess things like Jace and uh, and Oath Woods and yeah, you just tell your opponent. <laughs> you're right. You're right. The 2020 could kill the Jace, right? That's what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just swing right into the Jace. Just kill it. You just I mean, kill the Jace. Gonna... You just gotta kill the Jace, right? And then it's no longer a problem. As someone that just started playing Moto, that's like a nightmare of mine, is accidentally clicking kill their planeswalker instead of killing them. <laughs> yeah. Um, at least dredging is a lot simpler. Click a button and it dredges. I mean, maybe oh, yeah, deal yeah. with all your triggers. Serum powder and sh oh, serum powder and mulliganing. Those are really nice features. <laughs> right? How nice is it just to. <laughs> how nice is it just to. Not going through a set of sleeves every single tournament <laughs> because of mulliganing is really nice. <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> I'm a rough shuffler, so I mean, I I stretch them to tournaments, but I really shouldn't. You know, it's kind of like the yeah. I know. I, I actually, whenever I play not like a limited tournament, I always do fresh sleeves. I just can't. I can't. Like I should put any fresh sleeves every tournament because I destroy them. <laughs> I guess I did. I don't know. I just I. I... I never want to get just, that game loss, so yeah. I just always change sleeves. Every, any tournament, I always change sleeves. I think I've, I think I've reused sleeves for like you know side events, but that's about it. Like if I'm playing in like a big yeah. tournament, always new sleeves. They're not I that mean, expensive. When I was a huge like noob, you know, like a little kid playing, <laughs> I remember getting my first pack of sleeves. I played those things forever. <laughs> like, I mean. Yeah, no, I, I did they the same like completely thing. Completely deteriorated all the until like until there weren't sixty sleeves that could actually like be on a card. Like I was <laughs> playing with them. Oh man. Like I legitimately had a split split sleeves until I had less than sixty before I would stop playing with the sleeves. Did you play your on sideboard unsleeved so that you could save yeah, sleeves? Yeah, 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 yeah. I would unsleeve my main deck to slice <laughs> Cards into my main deck to, to put my sideboard cards in. I always have on sleeve cards. The goofy thing is that 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 crazy an idea because you know it keeps your wear and tear like the same. Because you know I've I've run into that. I like shuffle my sideboard. Oh and then, yeah, you have and a sideboard then, card you never use, and then just yeah, and, then, yeah. and then it's just clean, and you're like, oh man, hold on, I'm gonna fix yeah, this because otherwise my, I'm cheating. Opponent, it's all my opponent's dredge hate, and then I just cut it to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> just joking. I'm joking. That's not. I don't do that. But... <laughs> 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 so they haven't played against Dredge in a while, and there's just this completely clean sleeves in their sideboard. <laughs> we, we, we do not advocate cheating, by the way. <laughs> Please don't do that. That is literally cheating. You might as well stack your seven-card hand... And keep it in your lap while your opponent is splitting your deck. <laughs> I'm really surprised that guy got away with that for so long. Does nobody pile shuffle this someone's guy, deck? This guy, this guy, yeah, he kept his. There was a guy he, that kept his. Yeah, uh, yeah, playing Bloom, he, he kept, kept his, his seven his in his lap. He, kept a bizarre, oh. he played no powders in his in his dredge deck, and would just like keep up a bizarre in his lap. Oh my and god! Pull it out. Like, come on now. This is That's... like, I can see your deck list. You're not even playing serum powder, and you have bizarre every game. Like. He doesn't take, you know. I mean, he probably should. Take the dots. I, I think he you're should have. Cheat that hard, at least put the serum powders in your deck. Or if you're gonna cheat that hard, at least make it like your six card hand has bizarre. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know how he actually executed it, but all I know um, is pro... second hand story. All right. So, are you? When you grab your own deck, you can have it palmed, and then you can pull it over and then draw the seven. That's okay. that's basically the way that you so to watch out. If you see your opponent's hand, you can palm cards in a way like 
like that yeah. and just put it on top. I used to do like card tricks for a while, so I learned all this stuff, and then I taught all my friends all of them so they wouldn't get cheated. It actually is really helpful if you yeah. learn card tricks to prevent cheaters. Yeah, I don't know any card tricks, so I'm pretty sure so we have, so, so, uh, so he's dredging versus a Nile spell bomb here. Um, I mean, look at the board state, he's dead. Like just yeah, you might as well scoop and not reveal information, but well, yeah, well, no, no, he wants Brian Oath because he wants to know what he's against. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't seen anything. Brian Oath yet. Yeah, no, he, he doesn't know what he has. I mean, this would be really cool if it was you know Moto and you know he oaths into um, Containment Priest and you know <clears throat> met, my, met my hand with chance. Huh. But this is not Moto, and uh, anything that Brian oaths into is not going to be good for. Not going to bug it. I don't think Magus of the Future is going to be good, but I don't think that's in his deck anymore. I think he brought in the Magus of the Moat. I likely. mean, Magus of the Future is still pretty good. He's so... talking about Swell in his hand. What is it like? <laughs> it does he get garbage? It doesn't matter. He's Young Swell, plays a Tormund's Crypt, a Neil Spellbomb, an Ancestral Probe. Like, yeah. Yeah, you can he just doesn't always. Even need, he just, he... He can build nothing, and the this Yawgmoth's will is still backbreaking at this point. <laughs> I mean, Yawgmoth's is not that good. It draws in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. That's not that many. And exiles the graveyard like twice, yeah, <laughs> three times. There's another Neil spell bomb, yeah. Nah, it's not, <laughs> it's not that good. These, these spirit tokens are gonna get it done. <laughs> I he's it. I mean, like. <laughs> For what it's worth, it's at, he's eight. He's getting all these one ones. He is at eight. Yeah, and he, has, he keeps tapping that mana confluence. Yo, it keeps tapping those orchards. Matt needs to just play this stinkweed imp. He needs to not dredge. He needs to not bizarre. He needs to play stinkweed imp and just block all day. Oh man! Exactly. All right, back for one. So one we get a one two oh. flyer. Pseudo <laughs> death touch. <laughs> Where death touch existed. I mean, that's what Death Touch used to be. It used to be yeah, only combat on. damage. I remember that was such a huge boost, Death Touch. Is that right? Yeah. Almost every card used to have that old wording. It was only combat damage. Oh, I was thinking of um, Basilisk, where it's like attacks or blocks, doesn't even need to deal damage. See, there's the moat. Okay. And just, Magus of the moat. So those tokens don't have flying, well, even though they're tokens. using flying tokens. Yeah, those are spirit. Those are... Um, they're, not, they're not using flying ones. That's the one I'm seeing. I'm seeing the flying oh, token. Oh, you you have a different screen than okay. You have different ones than do. I guess the tokens are different. I don't know. I have all the images changed oh, to all like okay. the beta stuff, so it looks better. No. Uh... I'm looking... Okay. Yeah, you guys have a di- yeah. You have a different um. You have different art on your stuff than I do. Mine has all the um like newest art and everything. Oh yeah. Which is yeah. I guess on some of the stuff, but at least I have the correct spirit tokens. <laughs> I guess. <clears throat> the the oath is terrible. The mana confluence looks better, I think. Oh, it's, it's the, the mana confluence. It's the, uh, it's the promo one. Eh. And the forbidden orchards are the promo ones. The the um. Yeah, how's your how's how's the lotus yeah. look? The the expeditions. How's the how does the lotus look? The moxen look. The moxen looks like moxen. They look like normal. Ones. They don't look like the moto ones. Really? It's not moto art. Nothing gets upgraded. Oh, yeah. oh, the Force of Wolves got the Force of Wolves got upgraded to Moto Art, but the Moxes don't. I don't get it. I don't know who chooses this art. I don't know. You can actually change it all. I can show you later. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, I don't really care that much, but <laughs> I have the correct spirit tokens and you don't. So okay. Important. You're right. You got me there. But everyone else is seeing the incorrect <laughs> spirit tokens. So they're, they're 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 pretending it's Moto. You can you can log on to this this Twitch and and you know and realize you're, you know this isn't Moto because there's flying spirit tokens that were generated by Forbidden Orchard. They don't actually fly. <laughs> All right. So we got a Yogmoth's will. How much? So we're gonna exile the graveyard and then exile the graveyard and then exile the graveyard. <laughs> two, um, two, two Tormas. This is so absurd. You get so much stuff back. This All right. So much value. There's so many one casting cost spells in his graveyard. He's so, not gonna kill him, but <laughs> it's just, just so many cards. Like this is the fun. These are the fun Yogmoth wells. It's not just like Yogmoth well. Here's two combo pieces. You're dead. It's like Yawgmoth's Will, let's draw 7,000 cards, let's play a bunch of hate pieces, let's kill all your permanents. There's in, okay, so there's Ancestor Recall. I, I think he's trying to find a, a, um, 
a tutor or something so we can just tutor for Gristlebrand and just put it on top with Jace. I know it's Jace. Oh, do you already Jace brainstorm before the Yogwell? Um, I have to look at like the a lot here. of stuff that happened. I don't think he. No, I didn't see anything. Okay. Gonna probe and see the. No, wait, draw, draw, draw. He's picked on so many stuff in his turn. Draw, draw, yeah, draw, draw, draw. Put two back. Okay. Yeah, that happened a while ago. Another card. A Dak Fade in that doesn't do anything. I'm surprised he kept Dak Fade in. I and mean, he just wants to loot. He just wants careful study that bad. Or maybe he wants to. Does he even have a way to target anything? Could he steal Matt's Bazaar? I would, I would like to see that. I mean, he can ultimate Dak Fade in. It seems like it's impossible that he doesn't play Volk. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't play. I don't know. He doesn't really play much. I just. It, I don't think he has anything. No power blast or nothing like that. No, he usually plays a fire ice, but I don't know if it's in this list. I don't even know if he would leave it in. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he 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 plays by his own way. Like certain things, you call it's. You have to learn how he plays in order to get call stuff correctly, like the mental missteps. I mean, yeah. Okay, Nile Spellbomb. He, I mean, he is playing the, the, his classic three force of will, so... Yes. Alright, so just... Yeah, he's not, he's, not, it's, he's not playing anything like a target of land. And not at all. No, no random strip mine? Brian doesn't play that card. I've seen him play Strip Mine. <laughs> Has he? Okay. I think was his Thalia? first... Was Thalia in his deck? <laughs> <laughs> I, I could have sworn... Maybe it was a different card, but I could have sworn he had a Strip Mine in the sideboard of the first incarnation oh, okay. of, his, of his of his, yeah. um, Salvager's Oath from the yeah, NYSE. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe in the sideboard makes sense. Back, back when yeah, the deck had that's Lion's that's Eye Diamond. That the main deck. No, none. No, no, side, sideboard. Sideboard. Yeah. Back when the deck was like a more of a heavy combo deck. Yeah. He, <laughs> he slowly he slowly tailored and tailored this thing into I mean it's the same it's it's, it's I mean it's the same thing that I've done with Dredge, I guess. Me, me me and Brian have similar mentality in terms of how we like to play our combo decks. You know, you, you play the combo and you abuse, you abuse the combo to its, you know, greatest extent. And then you but you also, you know, have lots of other ways of winning and beating things. So is this a banked turn? Combo. Is this is this two turns coming up or? Um, I think it is. I don't think he discarded that time walk. He played earlier. I don't know. He's getting another oath activation, so he's topping in response. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when, when Brian first started playing this deck, I was like, "Yeah, that's the best oath deck." I agree with you. And everyone else was like, "This deck sucks." <laughs> <laughs> I think one champs. <laughs> And then people still say it sucks. <laughs> I think people just say it sucks because they can't play it. Yeah, they don't understand it. Like, I, why, are there three, why are there three fours of wells? Why is there Why is there two pirate spell bombs? Actually, this version only has one pirate spell bomb, so I don't even know what to think anymore. Yeah, but he has a backup knee hill. Right. But it doesn't... Um... Oh, he's conceding. Okay, so he's conceding. Yeah, he's seen enough of the deck now. I mean, I mean, he has four exile effects, and he saws. Yeah, he's playing he the normal. See, he just wants to see. Yeah, I mean, it, there was the salvagers with milled there, which I think kills him. Yes, yes. Yeah, so we'll take another quick peek at Brian's deck. People are asking. Um, his creature package is Salvagers, Gristlebrand, Magus of the Future. And the sideboard, he has a Canonist, a Dromoka, and a Magus of the Moat. Magus of the Moat came in. Um, I'm not sure about any other uh, sideboard cards. He brought in the Crips and the other Neil Spellbomb. And he, he's pretty ready for Dredge. I think he was a little he was a little weary because he lost to Dredge last week. And he's being like, okay, I don't, really don't want to lose to Dredge this week. Um, and I guess Matt just keeps his deck the same. <clears throat> he kind of has to. Yeah, Matt doesn't really... He can't really change that much. His deck is... I mean, there's definitely stuff you can do in terms of leaving more dredge plan and leaving more lands and etc. Um, uh, but on the play, you definitely want your on masks. Even way, even way more so than on draw. So if you left them in on the, if you brought them in, on, if you left them all in the draw, he's definitely gonna bring. He's definitely gonna leave them in on the play. 
I mean, like an unmasked therapy hand is amazing. That just demolishes stuff. But this is double bizarre. You you have to keep it. I think you have to keep it. But you can't cast any of your hate. Yeah, yeah. But you, it's just, just sometimes your opponent just doesn't keeps a hand with no hate, and I mean, you just play percentages as a dredge player. All mana draw. Does Brian keep the all mana draw? No, that's all mana mulligan. And he draws uh, not much mulligan. again. That's a mulligan. That's a ponder and nothing. Yep, Mulligan into lands and Gristlebrand. Oof. Okay. Wow. I'm probably going to Mulligan again. Yep, he's down to four. But he has a Nile Spill Bomb. Can't cast it. I know, he's crying. He kept that? He has to. Why? It has a hit. One land turns it on. Oh gosh, and the hills and the. I mean, that's this is the problem with the one shot. I mean, do you do you do you go to three cards? How what what one what like he has three one casters in that hand. One land yeah. turns on his whole hand except for dig. Like all right, we'll see. Does Matt, does Brian have the mana or the land? And nope. Draws chase the my sculptor. Uh, no mana. Man. And he's just going to end turn, and Matt's going to be like, what is going on? Is there a Rav Trap coming? Oh. Now, does he give so, respect to Rav Trap here? Do, do, um, I probably wouldn't, because I haven't seen it yet, but... You can try to play around would... everything. Yeah, you can't play around everything. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of the thing. you got to choose what you're playing around. He's playing around um, permanent-based removal. He's That's what he's seen so far. He's yeah. seen a lot of... I mean, like, you don't expect someone to have... Knee hills and tour mods. He didn't get a Narc Amoeba. Actually, double Narc Amoeba on the draw. Well, really he sucked. did see a ton of stuff last game. I don't even. I don't remember what it was. I would have been paying attention. He I just guess. saw Tormat's Crips and. Um... But no, with the off the oath activation, did he did he mill any? Did he wrote mill that one Rav trap he has? I don't think so. No. Oh, he's just conceding to double bizarre. That's anticlimactic. But yeah, I, yeah. I understand. Double bizarre yeah. is just gonna go insane. He's. Yeah, my Brian Morgan. Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. I would have kept Morganing if I was him, but I don't think it mattered. I guess. Would you Mulligan the? You would Mulligan the four card hand that's turned I'm, on by I'm one I'm land. Mulligan, I'm Mulligan the four card hand. Yeah, it's not turned on though. You just get one. You just get one knee hole. It's not even a permanent base state. I mean, the only hand that was even capable out of any of those was the Ponder. Was the six card all mana and Ponder. And like you, that's really sketchy. I mean, I guess at least you see three cards of Ponder, so you have a Scry, you have... I mean, I said at the, at the moment, I would have snapped Mulligan, but uh, thinking about it more, I guess you get you get to see a seventh card with a Scry, right? And then you get to see three more cards. You get to draw for turns, so that's eight cards. You get to Ponder, that's 11 cards you're getting to see. 11 you're cards see out of... Five, five cards. Five cards you haven't, you're not, that are not in your hand. And plenty of mana. Yeah, six. And plenty of mana to play. Whatever. The you six seem pretty so, good. So you get to see five additional cards with that with that six. Yeah. Whereas if you're mulling down to five, you only get to see six new cards, but you're not necessarily even going to get mana with it, right? Yeah. So it's a trade off. You get to see one more card, but potentially your whole hand is worse. And so we had we had nut draw versus super mulligans. It happens. All right. So we got one it's more. Not, well, it wasn't a nut draw because if he has one hate piece, one permanent base hate. That like Matt's hand is really bad. Yeah, that's true. So, it's double bizarre. But yeah, yeah, it's just can, a fast hand. Yeah. But we have our last match of the night. Um, so we'll be back in like one minute.